Good morning. It's uh, Friday, I think it is. And uh, I was thinking about uh, talking to my cousin last night and uh, thinking about devotional this morning. And I, I, I've been teaching and preaching since 1996, 95, 96. And I uh, worked as a volunteer for 17 years and then full-time now for eight years as a pastor. And I, th I think there's just one message that I wanted to share. I feel it's like my, my cornerstone, my the message from my heart that really means more to me than probably any other message that God's ever given me to, to preach. And number one is John chapter 14, verse 6, where it says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And one of the things today is, and one of the big arguments today is, well, anybody can get to heaven. Everybody's going to heaven. It doesn't matter. And the Bible's very clear that Jesus, number one, claimed to be nothing less than God in the flesh. And number two, claimed to be nothing less than the only way. And the disciples preached the same way that Jesus was the only way in Acts chapter 4 and so on. And so I, I think that's important. So I think one of the most important messages that I could ever share is this. Number one, John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me, which makes Matthew 7, 13 and 14 all the more important because it says wide and broad is the way that leads to destruction and narrow and small is the way that leads to life. So wide and broad is any other idea anybody had other than Christ to get to heaven or to have salvation, forgiveness of sins. And small and narrow is, is small and narrow for a reason. It's a reason because Jesus is the only way. And again, as I said before, that the, the, it's narrow because we have to go through that way alone. Nobody's going to get us to heaven. Nobody's going to make that decision for us. We don't get there any other way on anybody else's merit but we have to make that decision alone the decision to receive salvation and forgiveness of sins is through Christ Christ alone so it's narrow that it's one one way one person to get us there and only one it's narrow because we have to go through that door and make that decision alone and so uh, there's three questions there are three scriptures, but three questions that are very important to us as we live this life. And I think they're the most important questions we can ever ask. It doesn't, it's not about college, who I'm going to marry, what house I'm going to buy, what career choice I'm going to have. These are the three most important questions I think anybody can ever answer for themselves. And number one is this, in Mark 8, 27 through 29, Jesus is with the disciples and he asked Peter, he asked the disciples, um, who do people say that I am? And they, they respond, well, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah, some say a prophet, some say John the Baptist raised from the dead. And here's the most important question. He says, but who do you say that I am? And the confession finally was that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That's the most important question you can ever ask yourself. And an answer for yourself is, is, uh, is Jesus your Christ? Is he your Lord? Is he your Savior? Number two is this. Um... We all are going to ask this question when we get to heaven. We're going to stand at judgment. And the most important we're going to, question we're going to ask there is this. Lord, do you remember me? And that's Luke 23, 42. It's the thief on the cross when he was being crucified next to Christ. And everybody was throwing accusations and hurling insults at Christ. The one thief looked at Jesus and said, will you remember me? And that's going to be a scary thing. We have to remember that question because we're all going to ask that. When we stand before judgment, we're going to stand alone. And we're going to hope that when we say, Jesus, do you remember me? He says, yeah. Because it says there's some people that are going to say, uh, Lord, I went to church. I gave my tithing. I taught Sunday school. I did all these things in your name. I did even miracles, it says, in your name. And he will turn and look at them and say, I never knew you. It's because there's people that go through the motions with Christ. They're very religious, but they, they never had a relationship with him. So it's very important that we have this personal relationship with Christ. The heart of my ministry is always to push people to Christ. Not in the seats, not, I would love to have a big church, it may never happen. But I want to know that in my ministry I pointed everybody to Jesus Christ. And that's, that's the remember him, there's going to be time when we're going to ask that question, Lord, remember me. And he's going to say, 
Imagine how great it's going to feel when you when he's when you say, "Do you remember me, Lord?" He says, "Yes, I do," because you were a good and faithful servant. It means you came to Christ, you gave Him your life, you repented of your sins, and you did the best you could. Uh, grace is an opportunity to make a mistake while serving Christ. And I can say, way back in '95 and '96, I probably alienated people from the church because I didn't really know what I was doing and made me people angry even. But as I got older, I, I tried to get a little better at it, understand grace, understand mercy, understand love, understand, more importantly, that I'm a sinner saved by grace, and I know what Jesus brought me from. And so um, that's going to be a question. Will Jesus remember you because you brought him into your heart, you made him your Lord and your Savior, and you followed his teaching? Um, we often forget that. So who do people say I am? Who do you say that I am? And when we get to heaven, we're all going to say, Lord, do you remember me? And we, we're going to hope and pray that he says, I do. And then finally, the, one of the most important questions, I think, is Genesis 3.9, when Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden. Um, they, they had a relationship with God. They would meet with him, it seems, daily. They would meet with him in the cool of the day, and they had a relationship. But their sin, Isaiah 5, uh, 59.2, separated them from God. And there was a time when it says in Genesis 3.9, that Jesus was, or God was walking in the garden looking for Adam and Eve, and he, and he couldn't find them. And when he found them, they were covered in fig leaves, and they realized they were naked. They realized that he knew they had sinned, and they tried to cover their sin with fig leaves. And God asked, Adam, where are you? And so that's the question of the day. You can only answer this question. You know for yourself whether you're going to heaven or not. You know for yourself whether you've accepted Christ or not. And so that question must be answered, and only you can answer that question. No one can judge you either for that question. Where are you? This is a question for the heart. So God came into the garden. He had his normal meeting with them. They weren't there. He finally found them. They're covering their bodies with fig leaves. In other words, they're covering their sin with leaves, and then they're, they're trying to lie to God and, and say that instead of confessing, we screwed up, God, can you forgive us? They blamed each other. And so... The question today, Genesis 3, 9, is where are you? Are you walking with God? Have you made him your Lord and Savior? Have you invited them in your heart? And don't let any, I got a few letters from people, and thank you very much. I love them, and I'll answer any questions you have. Don't let anybody ever, for any reason, discourage you from following Jesus Christ. If you have a bad day at church, if somebody makes you mad, don't look at man. Always look to the cross. Always keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. There's no perfect church. There never will be a perfect church. Because the church isn't a building, it's people. And people make mistakes. People are rude. People have bad days. And sometimes that stuff happens. Jesus never makes a mistake. Jesus will never turn you away. He will always be there for you. And he'll never insult you. He wants us to love him and he wants to love us back. He wants a relationship with us. Every human being on earth, if we'll have it. He's not going to force it on us. He's, he, but he wants to have that relationship. It's our choice. So remember that people are going to say other things about Christ. He's a prophet. He's this. He was a good man. No, he was God in the flesh, John 8, 58. He claimed to be nothing less than the Messiah. Uh, who do you say I am? He, you better say he's your Lord and Savior. That's, that's the key. And uh, then we're going to have this big question when we get to heaven. Lord, will you remember me? And we pray that he does. That we're not just religious, but we have a relationship. Because that's key to that answering that question. And then the question ultimately, Genesis 3, 9, is where are you right now with God? Where do you stand with God? And I pray that you can answer that question and say, He is my Lord. He is my Savior. Uh, I've, I've asked Him to forgive me of my sins, and I'm doing the best I can to follow Him. So that's that's it. So have a great day. And uh, I'm, I won't do anything this weekend probably, but uh, I'll, I'll talk to you all Monday morning. Love you all. Bye.